All right, welcome back guys to the stand up paddle board build for my AliExpress hydrofoil. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to build and install a track cassette box for mounting the hydrofoil. Uh, if you haven't checked out my previous videos on the stand up paddle board, go check those out. I've also done a build for a prone foil board where I made a very similar cassette for that as well. Although in this video, I'm gonna go a little bit more in depth on how to make this. So I'll get right into it. Number one, uh, I previously purchased uh, a kiss hydrofoil cassette track box from AliExpress. Uh, I had some comments uh, in the, some of my previous videos saying that this isn't very strong and I have to agree it isn't. It's very light and I think this will tear out very easily if I were to glass this into my board and then mount a hydrofoil to this. The way these work is you have your, your track boxes in this and the idea is that this is a denser foam than your EPS foam or um, polyurethane foam if you're using that type of blank but I'm using EPS. Regardless, so the idea is that this distributes the stress and the load into the surrounding softer foam but I think this foam is just too weak and too it's not very strong so this isn't the best. So what I decided to do was well the recommendation uh, and what other people have done based on my research is you make these out of uh, polyurethane pore foam that is like of greater density than like six pounds per cubic foot the problem i had is i couldn't source it anywhere at least not in the quantities that i needed like i could get it in like big quantities but i only need to make like one or two of these track boxes right now and the stuff does go bad so what i decided to do instead um, and I did check around all the marinas and like boat building places and they all carried the two pounds per cubic foot Which is a very common foam, which is like it looks like this But they none of them knew anything about denser foams and they tried contacting their suppliers and they just had no luck Which is kind of funny. I don't know why You'd think for boat building that they would use denser foams now one place did it was able to find me a denser one but I had to buy it in like like a couple gallons, some ridiculous amount. So that didn't work out. So what I decided to do instead is I could replicate this with good old fashioned mother nature uh, wood. So I'm using white pine, which has a pretty good density and weight strength to weight ratio. It's not super dense and it's not super heavy, but it's very strong. Now, there's other woods that probably are a bit better, like maybe cedar probably would have worked, but I had a hard time finding cedar in the shape that I could glue together to make this. So I went with white pine. The density of this is similar to the very high density pore foams, maybe a little bit more denser. So I got a little bit of extra weight. And again, the idea of this is the track boxes will be installed in here and then it distributes the, the stress of the foil being um, in the water into the denser, material and then into my two pound EPS foam in the stand up paddle board. So that's the theory, that's the idea. I've had my prone foil board out for a surf and the track box, I made a very similar one in that, a little bit thicker, it went all the way through, but it held up no problem. Um, so I know this works. All right, I'm in the kitchen because I want to keep the bottom of this cassette that I'm making out of white pine, because white pine's nice and light. I've cut a bunch of pieces here that I got to glue together to make the cassette because uh, I've done this already for my prone board. But the reason why is because I am having a real hell of a time trying to find dense polyurethane pore foam that is denser than two pounds per cubic foot. So I came up with this solution using white pine. It's very light. The density, I think per cubic foot is like anywhere from 16 to in the 20s. And it'll be nice and strong. So I'm just gonna glue this together. I'm using polyurethane glue. I could use white glue, but I like that the polyurethane glue expands and fills any little voids. And a quick spritz with water just to activate it.
All I'm marking right now is the center flat part of the board because I'm going to do a double concave. So a concave on this side and a concave on this side. And then it's going to be flat out through the middle. So this will help with tracking when you're paddling this um, because this is a stand-up paddle board. So for the nose, before I shape the concaves, I'm going to shape a convex nose on this. So it's going to be rounded as opposed to a concave where it's scooped in. It's going to be more rounded here like this. So I'm going to shape down these hard edges so that it's nice and smooth, a little bit of a bubble look. You're going to bounce off should you touch the nose down when you're flying, at least from what I've read and from what I've seen in videos. So that's the idea behind that nose. All right, I got the convex nose shaped in here. You can see there's a bit of a curve on it, so that's nice and smooth. Spent a bit of time kind of shaping that. Next, I'm gonna shape the concaves on the two sides here, keeping the middle flat. What I did was I 3D printed this little tool here that's got these concave to it. Well, technically, I suppose this is prone, so it's convex, and it's, it'll shape a concave. And I'm gonna glue a piece of sandpaper to it and I'll use it to shape. Other things I've done for shaping concaves is I've used a sure foam and kind of carved out the foam, used a block of foam that I cut to shape, same thing, sandpaper, and then shaped it into, uh, into a concave. So there's a few different ways to do it. You can be creative. I'm gonna aim for probably about 10 millimeters, maybe quarter of an inch. I'll shape it, assess it, see if it's deep enough, uh, and then adjust as needed. Um, I don't want to go for anything too crazy, but I just want a little bit just so it would help with tracking for this stand-up paddleboard. Uh, because this stand-up paddleboard might be fun just to use it for uh, paddleboarding as well, not just using it as a delivery mechanism for the hydrofoil. We'll see. Uh, okay, let's do it. And I will say this bottom will have a lot going on. Convex, flat in the middle, then concaves on both sides. Got the hard rails on either side that aren't as pronounced as I thought I was going to make them. I've kind of just decided not. I've left one hard edge here and then kind of rounded it off on the other side. It's this board I've left very thick because again I want it so that I have a lot of flotation because I am very new at stand paddle boarding so this would be good for me um, just for learning. All right, to shape this concave is gonna be pretty simple. I'm gonna bring it up to about here before we transition into the convex. Uh, and then I'm gonna end up feathering everything and blending it in. So I've shut off some of the lights to kind of give you an idea of what the concave looks like. You can see here it's not too deep. It's maybe quarter of an inch, maybe. Might be a little hard here to capture on camera, plus there's a bit of dust here. But it's not super, super deep. It's not super pronounced. But you can experiment. Look at an existing board to get a sense. Anyways, this is just to show you how I'm doing it. You guys can figure out how deep you want yours. 
I gotta just widen it out a little bit on this, but for now I just wanted to show you this. Out from the front here, it's gonna be blended in. I'm gonna blend this in real well. So if we look, it starts off with nothing and then it builds in. And then moving down to the tail, you can see that I've had it come straight out. So now it comes out as an exit, so the water gets channeled through. And what I'll do is I'll repeat on the other side. So I'll clean this up later with probably maybe the sanding screen. I might refine this a bit, but you kind of see what the concave looks like. Simple. All right, this took a little bit of finagling, but uh, super square. Just put this in. That's what you want, so it's nice and not very many gaps. There we go. Now to take it out is the problem. Just gonna flatten these fin boxes, track boxes, so that they're, they're flat, flush with the rest of the cassette. Uh, I shaped the, the dual concaves this time, finished kind of uh, profiling the board, rounded the nose to put a convex nose in it, and then the, it's going to be flat out through the middle. So my concave is pretty good here. I just need to spend a tiny bit more time just kind of blending everything in and foiling it, make sure I'm happy with the thickness, but overall it's pretty good. And I guess I should say how much time I spent on this, just to give you a rough idea, especially for a hobbyist. If I was doing this for a living, like I said before, um, yeah, probably, uh, I'd probably have to work a lot quicker. But I spent about an hour and a half to two hours working on just finishing up the nose and then digging out the concaves. So the cassette is completed, the track box system. I haven't glued in the track boxes. I will do that later in the next video. I've done something similar to this on my prone foil board and it works really well, super strong. I've had it out, tested it, and yeah, very strong because it is, you know, pine, it's wood, much stronger than foam. Um, although it is a little heavier and I already described why I went with wood because I couldn't get foam. Next video, what I will end up doing is installing this, uh, the handle, the vent plugs, and the leash plugs. So all of the sundry items before doing the glass inlay. So that'll be uh, an upcoming video after that one. At least that's the order of operation at this point. Okay, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you found this informative for those of you who are trying to figure out how to install or make a track box uh, for your hydrofoil. Thank you so much for watching. Consider subscribing. Check out the description below for where I get my surf supplies and also the playlist for the other videos for this build series. All right, I will see you guys in the next video.